In this hands-on chapter, we would see how to write Snowpark Python code by using Session API and fetch table data from Snowflake as a table object in your local Snowpark instance. The code looks very similar to PySpark or Spark where we use a Spark context to read a table and create a data frame from it. This video will also show how Snowpark code gets translated into SQL queries using query history from our SnowSite web UI. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this Snowpark hands-on playlist. Let's jump into our VS code where I am using Python 3.8.16 and Snowpark library is already installed. So this is my read underscore table dot py. This is my connection parameter and here I am creating a session object. After the session object is created, I am printing the current database, current schema and once this is done, we will call the table function on our session object and that's what we will see it. This sounds very similar to spark.table or spark.read.table function. We will see an alternate approach on the session object and finally we will show the data. On the session object I am calling the table function and table function expect either the name of the table or it can take an iTable object and we will see it. Once I get this employee data frame then I can write and then I can run my program. Let's run the program. Now I can see I have total three records in this table. Now let's see how this data frame looks like in terms of object. So it has written snowflake.snowpark.table.table object. It is not exactly a data frame. So if you are invoking a dot table method, this will return a table object which gives a feeling of a data frame also. Alternatively, I can create a database variable where I would like to give the database name. I can create a schema variable and give this schema name and finally I can call the table object and input parameter as iTable. Let me print this and let's see how does it work. So this is being printed and this is also being printed and finally this is showing the same result. If I change the order probably it will fail. Let's run this. So it ended with Snowpark SQL exception 1304. So it says the database Snowpark does not exist or not authorized because the first element in this I table should be database followed by schema followed by the name of the table. So make sure that we follow the contract of this I table object. And finally we close the session. That is how we can get the table object from your snowflake. Let's go back to the snow site and see how this query are being executed. When I come to the query history from my activity tab, I can see all the action which are being executed are finally translated into SQL text and this is how it looks like. So this query has ended with an error where it we say select a star from snowpark.demo.emp it should have been demo.snowpark.emp and limit 10. So whenever you call show function it automatically puts limit. If I change the limit to 2 let's see what happens. So when I hover to this show function it takes n equals to 10. So let me give 2 and let's see what happens and I will just comment this. So it just printed 2. Let me refresh the page. And I can see it says select star from demo.snowpark.emp limit 2 and it runs some additional queries once this query is executed. So this is how you can fetch the snowflake table data in your snowpark. Refer the description section to download the source code used in this tutorial as well as cheat sheet. If you have any specific questions, queries or doubt, please drop me a note in the description section or in my Instagram account. Thank you, happy learning and keep growing.